Hey everybody, it's Dana. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you a brand new product that hit the market. This is called Fade Out Ink by Ink on 3. This is totally changing my world of watercoloring. Anytime you want to do any no line coloring, you know sometimes we really, really struggle on getting that done without seeing the lines or we end up using a product that fades out and we can't see the line because it's watered down well this product now from florette bloom who happens to be the mastermind behind this new ink is going to change any of your no line coloring now this product can be used with color pencils it can be used with um, your watercolors it can also be used with your alcohol markers and even your zig markers so I'm just going to grab my ink and I'm using an outline image for this and this just happens to be a outline of a bird but this is just going to show you how easy and how beautiful it is to stamp with this ink I went ahead and inked up this image and you just want a light impression of this ink now I'm going to stamp it twice. Since I'm going to be on camera doing this, it's going to show up very light. So I'm just going to double stamp this just so you guys can see on camera um, the detail it's going to give. And if you guys can hear any background noise, I'm going to apologize for that in advance because I'm actually doing my voiceover outside today. So now since I've stamped my image down, we're going to go ahead and start watercoloring. Now to watercolor, I'm just going to use a palette of some watercolor pans I already have, but now you can really see the outline of my image here. Now I'm using just some um, easy watercoloring today, nothing fancy, but you're going to see how beautiful this stamped image is going to look, and it's going to look like I hand did this by myself without actually having stamped it. So I'm going to come in very lightly with some of my uh, paint. Now I'm just going to very gently touch the line with my paintbrush and you're just going to see that line darken up and it's changing the color right into the orange. So it's picking up that orange hue and it's mimicking that color. So usually if we have stamped this down with Memento ink or if we've stamped it down with Distress ink, the color's either going to fade away and you're not going to see the line or the line's going to stay the ink color, which would usually be like a brown or a pink or a gray. But as you can see, this ink magically turns into the color of the pigment I'm using. So that gray color or that light green color has now turned into the orange color so now i'm going to come back in very lightly lay down some more of that orange color and now you're seeing that the line has now changed to orange and that is what's so revolutionary about this ink is it fades out to the color of the medium that you're using. So now I'm just gonna come in again, very lightly with some water and my um, paint, and just lightly use my brush to just pull in that color. Now I'm gonna go ahead up to my wing area, and you're gonna see this happen again. I'm very lightly gonna come across that line with some of my water and go right over it and you're going to see the line is darkening up and matching the orange that I'm using. So it's not disappearing. It's not going to be that gray or that pink color I put down. I'm still being able to follow my line because it's not disappearing. It's just changing into the color that I'm using. And that's what is remarkable and it's making my watercoloring so much easier. I'm not getting the harsh lines of having my image be black now, and I'm able to keep with inside of my lines because my line is still there. You can really see the detail right here of the feather strokes of my bird. You see, it's just turning a darker shade 
of that orange because it's just picking up the pigment. So now I'm going to go right around the top of my bird's head. And now it's starting to look like I have created this image. As it starts to dry back, you're not seeing any more of the ink color because it has totally transformed into the color I have used to paint with. And now I can come back in with the rest of my color and finish coloring in my bird. Now I have already used this with multiple mediums. I've been playing with it now for about, uh, about a week and a half. I um, happen to be working very closely with Florette. I'm part of her design team. And so we've had a chance to get our hands on this and really get busy in our craft room. And I've done a few periscopes on this. And I will tell you, every time I use this, I am more and more blown away with um, seeing how this product just has changed the way I can do no line coloring. So as you can see, now this bird totally looks like I've handed it myself. I do not have any harsh lines and it's just soft and pretty. So now I'm just gonna come back in and start adding in my detail. I'm going to let this part dry and I'm going to focus just on my beak part. Now, even if you become heavy handed with your water or whatever pigment you're using, don't worry about it. You are still going to have a fantastic product at the end of it. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to be mixing up a little bit of brown and I'm going to go in and I'm going to go a little bit heavy handed at first with my brown and now I'm going to come back in with a little bit more water. Now, I love watercoloring. I like that I can have, um, it's very forgiving to me and I can have my image bleed out a little bit. Now, that's what's so great about this ink. You see here, the beak has totally turned into just that brown color. You no longer see the ink and that total beak has turned into that light brown. Now, I'm just gonna go back in and fill in just around the edge of my beak and look totally looks like i've hand drew that with my watercolor all by myself now that part i'm going to let sit back and dry just a little bit and i'm going to go right back in the center and fill in his eye and i'm using a number two paintbrush on this just a very small little paintbrush just so i can do um some detail work on this now I'm going to come back in right across the bottom and just put in my bird's little feet. Now I'm going to come in a little bit heavy handed with my water just so it can cover up where my lines are because again, I'm going to be able to see the lines of where his little feet are and now I can come back in with a little bit more paint and now go in and fit on my shadow areas. So as this image continues to dry back, you can totally see every ounce where that ink was has dried back to the color in which I paint it with. And that is what is so cool and I just think downright magical <laughs> about this ink. So now since I have most of my detailed work done on this, now I, if I want to, I can leave my image just like this. But I want to mix up some um, blues and some grays just to add a few um, shadows and just to put in a little bit more color into my bird. But as you can see, now this bird is beautiful, it's light and airy, it totally looks like it was not stamped. And that's what we want to do when we no line color, right? We do not want it to look like we use the stamp on this. We want it to look like we could have possibly hand drew this thing. And that's what this ink allows us to do. So now to get your hands on this, you're gonna have to pre-order this. Florette had it in store and it was so popular, it already sold out. So this video is going up February 22nd, 2018, and it's already back on our pre-order. So you guys really need to head on over to Ink on 3 and get yourself a pre-order. Now she also has two other inks. She has a very beautiful detailed ink, which is in black. And she also has an embossing pad. You guys can get that at a special bundle price with the fade out ink. 
So now my image is totally done and look how gorgeous that looks. You do not see any of the stamp lines in this. And that's what we, like I said, we wanna see when we do no line coloring. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside to dry and now I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my card. Now for the rest of the card, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep this really, really simple. And I'm gonna add a little bit more water coloring. You guys, you have seen me say it before, you have seen my videos, I truly love water coloring. Now I do have other mediums in my room. I love Copic marker coloring as well. And you guys are gonna be seeing me do a lot more of that this year. But my true passion is water coloring. I think it's totally forgiving. In my opinion, you just can't mess it up. <laughs> So I'm using just some distressed oxide inks and one regular distress pad. I'm coming in with a fan brush, adding a little bit of water, mixing those colors together, and I'm just going to press down some Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock just to get myself a really pretty background on this. Now the paper that you see I'm using here just came off of a labeled sheet. It's just the backing, like if you're mailing out a package and you mail, you had a mailing label, that's all I'm using. This is just a scrap from the back of a huge um, label that I had to mail out. Again, I'm just going to come back in, get myself some more ink right down on that um, plastic. I'm gonna spritz it with some more water. I'm gonna come back in with that fan brush and just mix those colors lightly together and then i can go ahead and press my cardstock back in and i can pick up some more of that color now once i have a cute little design that i want i think that looks really cool i'm going to go ahead and start heat setting this and this is now going to be the backdrop for my cute little bird I'm just going to dry this back and those oxides are really going to start blending and I'm going to have a great little design for my cute little bird to sit on. Now since that's dried, I'm, I'm going to grab one of the sentiments out of my stamp set and I'm going to line that right up on my misty, and I'm going to stamp this down. Now this card I'm going to make sure that I keep, keep very clean and simple as I want my gorgeous watercolor bird to be the focal point of my card. So I'm going to press down that sentiment and I'm going to be using Memento uh, Rich Cocoa Ink for this today. And I'm going to stamp that down three times. My ink pad just happens to be a tad bit dry, but also my paper is still a little bit damp. So I just want to make sure that I get a really good impression. All right, that looks good. And now we can go ahead and finish up the card. Now I have went ahead and I trimmed down this panel and with a stitched rectangle. So I already have the outside of the rectangle and we're gonna make sure to use that piece as well on this card panel. So I have my large APG gun. You guys see me use this the majority of the time in my videos. And we're going to go ahead and put that down on a card base, which happens to be 110 pound Nina Solar White. And I'm just going to make sure that before I put down that back piece, that I have my um, insert going in the right way. That looks perfect. And now I can have that little frame piece right down onto my card base. Now for the little piece that I cut out and I have the sentiment on, I'm going to actually have that piece popped up. So I'm going to grab my foam tape and cut down just a couple of pieces just so this middle piece is popped out of the middle of my frame. Alright, so like I said, in order for you to get your hands on the fade out ink, you must pre-order it from Ink on 3. I know Florette spent many, many months on making sure that the formulation of this ink was something that was going to be a game changer for all of us in the crafting community, especially for us who like to create something and make it look like it was hand done by ourselves. Because everybody um, likes to do the no line coloring, but sometimes it's totally have been a challenge for us to create that without having to have... Um, 
the lines from different inks or not being able to see where we're coloring because the inks that we're using are actually moving or, or actually blending in with what medium we're using. And th this ink, as you guys can see, is totally something different and it takes on the color of the medium that you're using. All right, so I'm just going to finish pulling off the back of all of this foam tape. And now when I'm thinking, I'm like, I should have just went ahead and cut out some um, fun foam, but you know, I'm in my groove right now. And once I'm in my groove, it's really hard for me to stop. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that around and pop that into the center. And then this part of the card will be done. Now I'm gonna bring back in that lovely bird and look how gorgeous that looks. Now I have not been able to achieve this look with no, um, with any kind of ink to do any kind of no line coloring before. And I have been practicing and playing and having so much fun with this ink for, like I said, the past 10 days or so. And even the embossing ink and the detail ink is just beautiful. I will also link below to some periscopes that I had showed when I was using this ink last week. And um, you guys can also see that I've used it on solid images as well, and it's just as beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the foam tape on the back of this gorgeous little birdie. Sorry, you guys, I know you guys can probably hear that plane behind me, but this is gorgeous day here in Florida, and I did not want to sit in the house today. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop that up, and then this gorgeous card is gonna be done. Alrighty, and there we go. And look how fabulous. It does not even look like I stamped out that image. It totally looks like I hand drew that. And that's what we want, you guys, when we do that no line coloring. All right, everybody, that is the card for today. Don't forget to get your pre-order in on www.inkon3.com. All right, I will see you guys in another video soon. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure to give me a thumbs up. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.